3. A day after the end of that half year contest, the managers and the rest were in a rush to be off. It was the day before the test run on the new Ito railway line. With trains coming through just at the holiday season, the main street was bright with festive decorations. I had been in seclusion at the inn, sealed in a tin can, as the process of keeping the game shut off from the world is described. Now, on bus for home, with the decorations bright around me, I felt liberated, as if I had emerged from a dark cave. The raw earth of the roads around the new station, the flimsy houses, the jumble and disorder of the new town spoke to me of all the vital world outside. As the bus left Ito and set out along the coast road, we passed women with bundles of brushwood on their backs. Some carried white-leafed ferns, decorations for the new, uh, new year in their hands. Some had ferns tied to their brushwood. I suddenly wanted to be among people. It was as if I had come over a mountain and caught sight of smoke from a village beyond. I longed for the routines of ordinary life, preparations for the new year and the like. I felt as if I had fled some morbid, distorted world. The women had gathered their firewood and were on their way home for dinner. The sea shone with a light so dull that one could not guess its source. The color at the edge of darkness was of winter. Even on the bus I thought of the master. Perhaps my uh, longing for company had to do with my feelings for him. The last of the people in attendance to the game had withdrawn and only the aged master and his wife were left at the Ito Inn. The invincible master had lost his last championship match. One would have thought he would be the first to wish to leave and to recover from the strain of having fought both otake and illness. The best thing, one would have thought, would have been an immediate change of air. Was the master perhaps somewhat weak in these matters? Though all the various organizers and myself as well, reporter on the game, had come to find the place intolerable and had left as if seeking refuge, the defeated master stayed behind alone. Would he be sitting there, absently as always, leaving the gloom and the weariness to the imagination of others, as if to say that he knew nothing about them? His opponent, Otake of the seventh rank, had been among the first to go. Unlike the childless master, he had a lovely house to go back to. I believe it was two or three years after the match that I had a letter from his wife in which she said that they now had sixteen people in the house. I wanted to pay a visit. I did call with condolences after his father died and the total of sixteen had been reduced to fifteen. The visit, my first, was rather belated for it came a full month, I believe, after the funeral. Otake himself was out, but his wife showed me into the parlor. Her manner suggested that I brought pleasant memories. When we had finished our greetings, she stepped to the door. Have them all come in, please. There was a rush of footsteps and four or five young people came into the parlor. They formed a row like children called to attention. Apparently disciples of Otakis. They ranged from perhaps 11 or 12 to 20. Among them was a tall, plump, red-cheeked girl. Now be polite, said Mrs. Otake, having introduced me. They bobbed their heads abruptly. I felt the warmth of the household. There was nothing calculated about the scene. The house was one in which such things came quite naturally. When the young people had left the parlor, I could hear them chattering noisily through the house. Mrs. Otake invited me upstairs, where I had a, a practice game with one of them. She brought in dish after dish, and in the end my visit was a long one. That household of sixteen persons included disciples, uh, included disciples. Among the younger professional players, no one else kept four or five disciples in his house. In that, fact was in that fact was evidence of Otake's popularity and affluence, of course, but perhaps his strongly domestic inclinations and his great attachment to his own children reached out to embrace the others. 
sealed in a tin can. During that last match, Otake would call his wife immediately at the end of a session. Today the master was good enough to play until, and he would give her the number of the last play. He reported only so much, offering nothing that might hint uh, at the progress of the match. I could hear him make his report, and I think how much I liked him. <laughs>